In this video, let's take a look at class components in React. Class components are basically ESX classes. Similar to a functional component, a class component also can optionally receive props as input and return HTML. Apart from the props, a class component can also maintain a private internal state. In simpler words, it can maintain some information which is private to that component and use that information to describe the user interface. To get a comparison, let's create the exact same greed component but this time as a class component. Let me create a file called welcome.js. I am simply changing the name because we cannot have two files with the same name. Now whenever you create a class component, we need to include two imports. We need React and the component class from React. Next we define the class. Let's call this class welcome. For this class to become a React component, there are two simple steps. The first step is it should extend the component class from React. So class welcome extends component. Second step, the class has to implement a render method which will return null or some HTML. render method which returns some HTML. And that is pretty much it. You have created your own class component. Again, right now this component is in no way connected with the rest of our application. So what we have to do is export the welcome class from welcome.js, import it in app.js and then include it in the app component. So export default welcome and back in app.js we are going to import welcome from components slash welcome and within the HTML I'm going to add the custom tag welcome. If we save all the files and take a look at the browser you should be able to see the text class component. So the basic class component is working. Now that we have seen how to create a functional component and a class component, you might be wondering what is the advantage of using one over the other and when exactly should you use a particular component type. Now I definitely want to discuss that but what you have to keep in mind is you might only partially understand the discussion. And that is completely fine at this point. We will be listing down topics we haven't covered yet. So it will definitely be tougher for you to relate to. And that is why I am going to briefly talk about them just so that you have a basic idea. As the videos progress and you learn more about the different concepts in React, it will start to make much more sense to you. So let's compare the two component types. And let's begin with functional components. Functional components are simple functions receiving props and returning a declaration. You should try to use functional components as much as possible. And by that I mean if it is possible to create a component with both the approaches, always go with the functional component approach. The first advantage of using a functional component over a class component is the absence of this keyword which you will encounter in a class based component. This keyword can be quite tricky for a beginner and functional component will help you in that aspect. The second advantage is you will be forced to think of a solution without having to use state. If you have a number of components each with their own private state, maintenance and debugging your application is kind of difficult. Functional components tend to be without any complicated logic and are mainly responsible for the user interface. 
This is why functional components are also called stateless components, dump components, or presentational components. Class components, on the other hand, are a bit more feature rich. They can maintain their own private data, also called as state. They can contain complicated UI logic, and most importantly, they provide lifecycle hooks. We will discuss about lifecycle hooks in detail later on in the series, but for now, I just want you to know that they are really useful. And because of what they are capable of and how they are used, class components are also called as stateful components, smart components, or container components. All right, now so far we have seen three components, app.js, greet.js, and welcome.js. In all the three components, we simply return some HTML. But let me tell you, that is not regular HTML. It is something known as JSX. But what exactly is JSX? Let's take a look at that in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. I'll see you guys in the next video.